Hello, everybody. Welcome back. And uh, unlike what I just said, we have Cornet. He's not going to be talking about e-commerce. He's talking about e-marketing suite and some of the uh, new headless features that you've been adding there. Yes. Um, I'll. That's, you don't need much introduction. You've been here many <laughs> times before, but I'll, I'm sure you'll do all of that. I'll, I'll let you take it away. Thank you very much, Callum. All good. And we'll get going. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, um, or morning or evening, I should say, depending on the time zone that you're watching. Uh, my name is Kone, and I'd like to welcome you all very much to my session of today, Headless Personalization Using the Marketing Suite. So for today, we'll be going over a couple of different topics uh, that have to do with, um, like I said, Embraco, Headless, some Marketing Suite stuff, some best practices, some front-end related things, um, pretty much everything having to do with uh, Headless. We'll end up with some uh, potential considerations and takeaways. Um, we'll be taking a look at handling caching of personalized content, and we'll have uh, a look at what's uh, both possible uh, with the various new changes uh, with your marketing suite and um, Braco. So um, besides that, um, if you have any questions during the talk, be sure to drop them in the chat. Um, I have the chat open uh, as of right here, um, which I will be able to cover at the end of the session. So uh, don't be shy and uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to know. So, like Kellen already said, a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Corné, Corné Oskam. I'm a lead developer over in the Netherlands uh, for U Marketing Suite. Um, I'm a two times Embraco MVP. And besides that, I also have a tech blog, which mostly consists of Embraco related content. But enough about me, let's get into the details for today. So, before we can get into uh, the details for today's talk, we'll first have to cover what is Headless. Of course, Headless is a topic that has already been uh, mentioned many times, uh, not only today, but uh, has been a major topic over the last, uh, let's say, couple of years. Um, but in essence, when we're talking about Headless in the context of a uh, content management system, um, we're talking about the separation of its content management and the actual presentation of the content. The major advantage of uh, going Headless is that the, in this case, the Headless CMS exposes its content via an API instead of actually rendering its content itself. Um, this is also uh, one of the major selling points for uh, going with this approach, is being able to reuse all of the content that you're, uh, in this case, exposing through your APIs and managing through your management system. Um, for several years, we've had uh, Umbraco Hardcore uh, as the software as a service offering for headless Umbraco. And of course, as of Umbraco 12, uh, we also have access to the content delivery API uh, natively in the uh, core of Embraco itself. Um, as of, I'm not sure how long ago, let's say a couple months, half a year, a year or so, um, Embraco Commerce also released their own storefront API. Um, but of course, uh, with all of that, there was one package that couldn't be left behind. And that is, of course, your marketing suite. So, um, like I already said, we have Embraco Hardcore, Embraco 12, Commerce. But now, as of November 1st, we have uh, the your marketing suite headless add on. Um, compatible with uh, your marketing suite version 1.25, which uh, adds uh, a couple of features that allows you to turn your uh, headless setup with Embraco into a fully your marketing suite ready setup. What we do is within the setup, we uh, both add our own set of different APIs, the your marketing suite marketing APIs, but we also integrate with the content delivery API itself of Embraco to provide the uh, best experience with as minimal effort from a developer as possible. So, how to get started? The installation is actually surprisingly easy. Uh, there's only a, three, uh, a couple of steps that we have to take. Um, first of all, we need to make sure that we uh, have uh, both your marketing suite and the marketing suite headless package installed. First command can do so from the terminal, but you can use any old uh, method uh, for installing your NuGet packages um, that you're used to. Um, the next step we can uh, take is on our startup CS is at a single line of code. Uh, behind the add delivery API from Braco itself um, to make sure that we uh, also add our own documentation uh, to the back office uh, for Swagger uh, so that you can see all the various endpoints that are added and that you can uh, have fun with yourself. And lastly, but not uh, certainly not least, is that you have to make sure that the delivery API from Braco itself is enabled, otherwise you can't make full use of all the shiny features out there. So. Let's make this thing as interactive as possible and go into a demo because nothing, uh, nothing makes uh, personalization easier to show than, of course, a demo itself. 
For this, we'll be taking a look at uh, a, a demo website that makes use of Umbraco's content delivery API, uh, which uses Next.js in this case for the uh, fetching of content and the uh, server-side rendering of our website. So, uh, let's take a look. If it is going, there we go. Um, so like I said, uh, we're currently uh, taking a look at a uh, block, which is um, built using Next.js and makes use of Umbraco's content delivery API, uh, which pretty much consists of a wide range of uh, various articles uh, related to any old block that you can uh, possibly make use of. Um, in this case, we're also um, uh, visiting our uh, web page as a first-time visitor, so we don't have any history or knowledge yet about uh, who's visiting our page, uh, what pages has he or she visited, um, any of that information. So, um, the first page we'll be taking a look at, in this case, is the About page. What we notice on this About page is that it is, in this case, quite generic. We have a generic About Us title, uh, we have a uh, banner image on the top, uh, which is uh, not really tailored to us in particular, but to any old visitor to our web page. Um, but in Embraco, we have configured uh, two variants of this specific page, the default variants that we are currently looking at, and a page that is targeted specifically for anyone that we have marked as being a developer, or at least someone that's interested in uh, looking at developer-related articles. So, in our uh, little setup, uh, let's take a look at some of our various blocks. Head over to our uh, homepage and uh, scroll down a bit to open one of our uh, blog pages. In this case, we have a blog which is named .NET 8 News. We have some lorem ipsum uh, over there, but we can pretty much uh, say, okay, if you are someone that has opened this page, we can assign some points to you in the role of a developer because uh, this is a very developer-oriented page and we are most likely uh, targeting developers uh, when, uh, when you're actually opening or viewing this page. So the next step, uh, once we head back to our homepage, is uh, scroll down a little bit more and we see the next article, this case called Next.js and your marketing suite. Again, we have an article, we can say uh, quite uh, safely, this one is uh, directed at developers um, because it contains some technical terms, uh, it might even include some instructions, uh, some guides, uh, some reference to documentation, um, anything that would scream, okay, this one is dedicated to uh, developers. So by going back, what we can do is we scroll down a little bit further. And uh, last but not least, uh, not but not least is uh, another article called Developing Graphs Using Graph.js. Just like the previous posts, this one is also very heavily dedicated to uh, developer audiences, um, which means that all three blog posts that we visited right now um, are uh, targeted at developers. And in uh, behind the scenes, we have built up a profile for your visitor that pretty much says, okay, we most likely uh, know that you are a developer right now um, and you have hit a certain threshold. So, what happens next is when we are visiting our about page, you can see suddenly the page looks different than before. We have a custom title, something saying like headless architecture for developers. Uh, the imagery has changed. Uh, suddenly this uh, about page looks a lot more appealing to me as a developer. Do note, this is still the same page as before though, especially in the title uh, or in the URL, uh, it's still slash about. Um, Umbraco still, uh, um, uh, returns the same content for uh, the slash about page. The only thing that actually changed is what our uh, visitor uh, currently sees. So that is pretty much the basic gist of what an end user might experience uh, when visiting a blog that uses Umbraco and your marketing suite. So let's take a look at what's actually happening underneath the hood and see uh, the actual code in action by ways of the various API endpoints. So We'll head over to Swagger of our Umbraco installation, uh, which by default will show us our uh, blank default API. Um, sadly, uh, the actual dropdown isn't showing on the recording right now, um, but what we can see is that we have uh, two different, uh, uh, I should say, two different kinds of documentations available, uh, being the Umbraco uh, Content Delivery API and your Marketing Suites API. On the content delivery API, what you can see with the installation of your marketing suite headless is that the various content um, 
API endpoints uh, suddenly have two additional headers that you can supply. In this case being the fourth segment and the external visitor ID headers. Um, we'll be give, we will get back to these uh, shortly uh, by taking a look at what's, uh, what they actually do. Um, but it's good to know that uh, this is all integrated with Umbraco's own uh, API documentation after the installation. So what we can do next is uh, take a look at the uh, brand new API that is in released with Umbraco's uh, of Ritu Marketing Suite's uh, installation of the Marketing Suite Marketing API, um, which is a uh, set of uh, four different groups, which contains a various, uh, various number of endpoints, all having to do with the experience that you might use uh, or that you might need uh, when uh, working with personalized uh, content, um, a B testing, uh, page view tracking, pretty much everything that is needed uh, for uh, headlessly implementing the features of the marketing suite. So uh, to go into quick detail of what the various endpoints are, uh, we start off at the top with the uh, track page view endpoint, uh, which can be used to uh, dedicate a uh, page view for a specific visitor, uh, so that not only the analytics in the back office will be able to track uh, which um, page a specific uh, user has visited, but also be able to uh, act accordingly based on, for example, uh, A-B testing, uh, personalization, or any other soft, uh, sort of uh, soft uh, custom code that you may have uh, implemented using your marketing suite. Um, besides that, we also have some other things having to do with the actual personalization itself. Uh, the first one being assets, um, because you can also, uh, instead of actually changing the content, uh, you're able to um, provide custom JavaScript and or CSS uh, straight from the back office that can be injected into your page because we are working uh, with a headless setup in this case. Uh, we can't actually do that from a rendered site, of course. Um, so we have some API endpoints dedicated to actually uh, getting that information so that you can handle it yourself from your uh, front end. Um, we can also fetch the various different uh, segments that are active for your specific uh, user. Um, so in this case, uh, in our setup, we have seen uh, we are a developer, for example, um, and we can uh, see which uh, segments our specific uh, uh, visitor belongs to. But also we have an endpoint for all generic, um, uh, generic segments to take a look at which pages uh, are, uh, are versions that contain variations and which pages are uh, uh, not personalized or a and or A-B tested. So let's head back over to the Umbraco Content Delivery API and simulate what our actual Next.js application has done for us. Uh, we do so by fetching the content specifically for the About page uh, using the Path API endpoint from Umbraco itself. Um, so what we'll do, like I said, we'll fill in slash about on the path over there. Um, and we'll leave the rest of the information blank uh, to get the response that we would get uh, by default. Let's scroll down and hit execute. And what you can see is then, if I scroll in a little bit, is that the actual uh, content that gets returned uh, corresponds to the uh, content that we've seen at the first step of our demo. So in this case, a markup version of the title being simply uh, about us, uh, instead of the personalized version, uh, the, image, uh, the image link above is also the one um, that wasn't personalized, but you'll have to trust me on that, of course. Um, but this would be the default response that you would see uh, without any other information supplied. So now that we can head back over to uh, the marketing API uh, so that we can simulate a, uh, a couple of visits from our uh, visitor to a developer-oriented blog post. For this, we'll make use of the track page view uh, client variant and we'll paste in the URL of the uh, page that we are uh, visiting. Of course, uh, we are currently doing a simulation for all of this, but otherwise you would have, let's say, your Next.js application or your front-end execute these requests. By then clicking Execute, we will see that everything uh, goes successfully. We are getting a 200 OK response, and in the body of our response, we are getting a unique GUID that represents our visitor. That means that uh, for this specific uh, visitor, uh, we will be able to use this GUID in all uh, other locations uh, for the various API endpoints to make sure that instead of them being uh, anonymous in uh, the, the default case, uh, we can now execute them on behalf of a recognized visitor um, from any platform of your liking. 
So what we'll do is we copy the visitor ID um, and we'll simulate several page views to the same page. Of course, they can also be different pages, but the result will be the same. So I'll paste them in, in the external visitor ID field and hit execute a couple of times. So we'll act like this, uh, this user has visited the same page three or four times over. Pretty easy as that. So after that's done, we can head back over to the content delivery API and see what actually happens. So uh, by going back to the API that we have just visited, what we can now do is try it out again. We'll be visiting the same about page, but in this case, we'll paste in the unique visitor ID of the visitor that has just visited several developer-oriented pages. By scrolling back in again, we can now see that suddenly the actual content of the same page has changed to the variant that we have seen in the second example, where in this case the title says headless architecture for developers, instead of just being about us. Uh, the URL has also changed, um, and pretty much all properties of this specific variant are being returned for this endpoint, um, instead of being the generic endpoints that uh, we've seen previously. Of course, we've currently taken a look at the slash path endpoint from Umbraco, but uh, the same features work on all the various endpoints. So both the, the query endpoints, the get by ID or IDs, um, and with Umbraco 13 coming up and uh, the V1 uh, version of the content delivery API being deprecated and uh, the V2 version uh, being released, this will also, of course, work just as well with that. So yes, it really is as easy as that. Um, out of the box, there's no need for any custom API endpoints uh, to, to fetch content or do any sort of personalization. Um, you can make use of all the same content delivery API endpoints that you're already used to. Um, and it, because pretty much all of the uh, standards that Umbraco already uses apply for this as well. Um, let's say you make use of a custom package that uh, makes use of a custom property editor. Um, out of the box, I can guarantee you 99% of the time uh, it will work uh, just as well because, uh, because of the implementation that Umbraco uses to deal with these kind of variations. So yes, it really is as easy as that. It just works. So often I get asked in this case, okay, it's cool and all, but how can we deal with caching? Because uh, in this case, we have a setup that makes use of server-side rendered uh, pages. Um, but by doing so, there are of course two, uh, two major selling points that you might want to implement, uh, both being either caching for the server-side uh, rendered pages itself, or even go one step further and turn them into static side generation, uh, a static side generation setup, uh, so that you um, uh, have the most optimal performance that you can get by only having to serve the actual pages to your user. Um, and of course, it's uh, all very much possible. Otherwise, I wouldn't, of course, be uh, including it in these slides um, with the, the following steps that we need to take. Um, so, to implement your uh, caching uh, mechanism, depending on whatever framework you would like to use, of course whether it's Next.js or any other, uh, uh, yeah, for sale, uh, you name it, uh, anything that can render your uh, content for you. Um, the first step you'll have to take is actually determine which pages contain variations. Um, in the list of um, endpoints that I've uh, showed, in the, uh, showed first, um, there's an API endpoint that uh, returns a list of all the pages that contain one or more variations. Also meaning uh, that if a page does not contain any variations, you can just say straight up cache them uh, without any sort of interference. If they do have uh, variations, there is a couple more steps that we need to take, which are the following steps. Um, because after that, we'll need to uh, actually determine which segment our visitor belongs to. Of course, another uh, API endpoint that's currently available. We can then fetch the content for that specific segment instead of that specific visitor, uh, so that we can say, uh, in this case, instead of a specific visitor that uh, belongs let's say in the developer group, we can just say what content belongs to the developer group in general, uh, return that and then uh, cache that content for that specific version. And then all we have to do is serve the personalized content to our actual visitor. Of course, world domination might be at the end, but we'll see what our other steps are required. I'd love to uh, see what you can do with that. So a couple of consideration and takeaways. Um, Especially not only when working with headless, but also with uh, working with analytics, personalization, A-B testing, uh, you name it. Um, start small. 
uh, you can always expand afterwards. There is no need for an entire marketing team or uh, an entire team of developers to be crunching uh, all possible variations to have any sort of benefit. Uh, simply starting with one small page with one, uh, with one variation for what you might expect to be the major uh, split and audiences of your uh, platforms, uh, you can already benefit from all the, uh, the, the optimal points for uh, your marketing suite. Um, you can use analytics, of course, to your own advantages when doing that uh, to see which pages get the most uh, views or uh, which uh, demographic uh, gets, uh, yeah, which, which demographics visit your uh, platform the most. Um, and last but certainly not least, uh, I'd like to throw in that it's also very easy to integrate with things like uh, Umbraco Commerce, uh, to bring it back to what, what Callum already said, is, um, for example, because Umbraco Commerce makes use of uh, products as being part of content, um, the way that you personalize uh, content is no different than the way you would personalize uh, pages in, uh, in Umbraco. Um, so personalization and or B testing functions just as that. So uh, be sure to uh, yeah be sure to get creative with that. Um, but if you have any other questions, for free to of course uh, let me know. Um, I think I still have some time left uh, for now. Uh, I don't currently see any questions in the chat, so that might not be the case. Uh, if you do, feel free to let me know. Um, so be sure to stay in touch with me. Um, I'd like you all. I'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in. Um, I hope I was able to inspire you to get started with personalization. Um, you can find me on all the places where the cool kids hang out these days. It's at X, Twitter, Mastodon, GitHub, LinkedIn, Discord, you name it. Um, so hit me up if you have any further questions. Um, and I'd like to thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Corne. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, great session. I'm always quite inspired seeing the you marketing. Uh sweet and and the power and in fact i was just looking at our internal uh, slack channel and the team's going oh this looks great we should be using <laughs> cool. more of this so that's cool um i was going to ask um the did you have any resistance with with getting the uh marketing suite into into a kind of headless fashion did, were there any technical challenges you had to overcome because um, i know typically it's been built a lot around the request pipeline in Umbraco mm -hmm. and like you know assigning things the request to make sure it's it's all done so how, how does that how does that been to adapt for <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, the, the the major technical challenge in this case was actually figuring out what Umbraco does underneath the hood, mm. um, especially the integrations with the content delivery API itself. Um, I I think I'd look more at the the actual code of Umbraco than the marketing suite code to to <laughs> implement this. Um, but especially because of the new tech stack and with .NET six plus uh, everything being part of middleware and being able to to hook into all the various requests and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it made it a lot easier once you got the hang of how Umbraco actually uses the flow to uh, deliver content, to, to hook into that, not only to, to expand on it, but also to um, not only, in, let's say, inject variations um, of content, but uh, luckily Umbraco has already been uh, working on the, the foundation for uh, or dealing with segments for quite a while now. Um, and they uh, uh, consisted with that standard over the years. So uh, that, that made this process a lot easier. Exactly. There was a discussion actually on the CMS team uh, maybe a couple of meetings ago about segmentation because it's a weird one because you are the only people actually properly using that feature of the APIs. So it's, uh, and I know that your team, in fact, helped make, those make the uh, exactly. APIs what they are and make the back office work for it. So um, I'm sure when the new back office comes around, that might be a slightly interesting one. Where exactly. They, where it's exactly. not being tested properly because it's not a core feature it's not a it's not a, a, a functionality that's actually exploited by the core directly so. yeah and, and that's what makes it interesting because Umbraco, like i said it does offer all the handlebars it, it offers things like the variance and the segmentation but it's pretty much all just left blank underneath mm. the hood and it's up to you to do do all the implementation itself how uh Umbraco actually uses that yeah. so that's i think also a major hurdle for most uh other packages package developers yeah. uh to to make their own uh implementation of such a thing yeah um, yeah because there, there was the discussion about do we, do we go all in and have to properly try and support segmentation on the delivery api yeah. like what's the value and i said well yeah but you're not really supporting it properly anywhere else so yeah. I, I kind of said let let your marketing suite decide how they want to want to do it and yeah. then and then go from there it sounds like you've uh you we figured it out you figured it out <laughs> so that's great that's awesome um, i was going to ask without getting any access in the post from jeffrey What's next? So headless was a big roadmap yes. item you had. Um, you're fairly new to the you marketing suite team. What's the next big thing? 
Yeah, so uh, of course, Embraco 14 is around the corner. Uh, that's going to be a major, uh, a major challenge um, because um, uh, your marketing suite really prides itself in being as UI friendly as possible. Um, and uh, you do a lot of customization. Of the it's experience. pretty much everything is, is customized to, to to offer the best possible experience without any actual code interference. But yet, the downside of that is it's now uh, it, it now needs to be let's say entirely rebuilt. What's um, your tech stack there? Is it Angular JS like the rest of the back office? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Currently, it's all Angular JS, and we're going to be moving to the old new tech stack. You know, Vite, uh, Lit, uh, gonna, everything to do with that. You're going to follow that. We're going that to to follow that uh, that same pattern. No, um, not tempted to bring another another you know v uh sorry uh like views svelte something i'm, like I'm not there. tempted as of yet um <laughs> uh, mainly because um luckily the, the ties with embraco are quite close so yeah. especially niels has been helping out a lot okay. uh, with your suggestions and uh just ideas on maybe this can be useful or have you tried taking a look at this feature that we're currently implementing might be of use of you yeah um so yeah, especially with something that's so heavily under construction as of yet, um, I don't think it would be too yeah. wise to try to hack or <laughs> to steer much. away too much away yeah. from Braco already. Yeah, do do too many uh, innovative things at once. Exactly, you're, exactly. You're it's already ready. quite uh, innovative uh, yeah. as is. So yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. That's great. That's awesome. I, I look forward to seeing that. And uh, where can we find out more about uh, like new stuff? Umarketingsuite.com? Yeah, umarketingsuite.com is the main uh, main location. We have a set of blogs where we uh, post both important updates and whenever we uh, release a new version of your marketing suite, we have a product update over there with everything that has changed. Um, and like I said, of course, all the various socials on LinkedIn, uh, both your marketing suite and myself, um, I try to post the, the most important uh, important things over there. But if, like I said, if anyone has ever, uh, ever has any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, or the team and we'll uh, We'll be sure to get in touch. Sure. And we did mention it briefly earlier today, but you are today's uh, 24 Days in Umbraco. Yeah. As well. So your post is on the same topic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's also on headless personalization using Morocco. I already said to to Christian that the timing couldn't be better today. Um, so if you do have uh, the, if you do wish to to read up on uh, the things that I've talked on to or they, uh, uh, talked about today, uh, be sure to take a look at Twenty Four Days in Morocco. I believe it's day thirteen right now, um, which is uh, a, a, a version of today's talk. Um, a bit more detail on the Morocco sites configuration things. Um, so yeah, be sure to. Uh, Take a look at that. Brilliant. Always lovely to see you, Corne. Um, you too. We'll, uh, you're hanging around for a bit, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe you'll pop your a head in, 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 in a sec then. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll be back in a short moment with uh, uh, a bit of a recap on uh, what, what's gone on so far. And then we'll have some more talks for you in about 15 minutes time. Give us 30 seconds and uh, we'll be back with you.